Hi. It's Barb, the director of, of <laughs> it started off bad already, uh, events manager. And I'm Krista, and we're here again for the Q&A session. And we are waiting on a special guest. I don't know where he is. is. Where is he? I said, yeah. You promised he'd be there. I think oh, I hear oh, oh, here's something. <laughs> Hi, Doug. Hi, Welcome to FMCA q &A. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Glad you can make it. Well, like you've been kind of busy. Yeah, I was trying to get the whole building lit up, and those stinking lights don't work. So I apologize for being late. <laughs> well, you have been sort of in the overboard with the holiday spirit. A little bit. A little yeah, bit. Uh, we've gotten your emails and crazy postings and all the Christmas jargon. Good, good. Glad to hear that. Got everybody excited. Um, and we, you know, we're just coming off your early bird promotion and now you've all bad gone crazy with a Christmas holiday but, promotion. Uh, well, it's not all that crazy. I, I just figured that some of you folks probably want to park close. So let's park it close. Let's give people an opportunity to do it. So we're going to have a little contest. We're going to draw three names from everybody that's registered before the 21st. And those three friend, folks can and then invite friends to park with them, a friend. Um, so I have a total of six coaches there. You guys will be front row parking right there in front. Everything is going to be right there in front of you. And uh, you have a good time. We'll also have some special seating for you at the entertainment. So sign up if you haven't already. If you have, good luck. Hope you win. What's the deadline on that, Doug? We're going to do. We're going to pull that the 22nd. That's our last day here uh, working um, before the holidays. So. We're gonna we're gonna have our deadline for that the 21st of December. So by midnight, you need to be in. We're gonna pull it the next. We'll draw the names next morning and uh, contact those who who won. Hey, well, we're we're gonna give it a couple more minutes. Let a couple more folks jump on here with us. We're here to answer your questions about Perry. So just type them. We'll see it. We'll do our best to answer. Um, in the meantime, a few questions have been emailed in. So Doug and Barb are going to tackle a couple of those. All right, one of the questions, David Herman, uh, he was unable to, I don't know if he doesn't have Facebook or wasn't able to make it with us today. He emailed us the question, um, will Sunday services be available on site or local church listings provided? Um, I can tell you we will have uh, interdenominational inter services on Sunday morning. Um, we will also have a Catholic mass on Saturday night. Uh, as well, we will have a listing of the different uh, churches in the Perry area. So if you if you need to go and do some worship on either Saturday night or Sunday, uh, we'll make sure you can find some place. Uh, we got another question from HiQ. That's his name on his email. Um, and apparently he's going to be uh, taking the RV basics class. And if you're new, if you're a first timer, um, I would suggest you go and look at this RV Basics. It is a terrific class um, that talks about everything you need to know as a starting out RVer. It tells you, you know, all about the dumping, all about electric, about fire safety, about, you know, weight and tires. And everything. I, it's the stuff, the basic stuff you need to know so you can survive as a first time RVer. And he asked, for those of us attending both the pre-conference education series and the conference, but staying nearby, not at the site, is there special parking? Here's what we're going to do. For RV Basics, we are going to have uh, special parking. They're going to be in the Miller Murphy Howard uh, building in one of the rooms there, and that's where their class is going to be. Right outside of that is a parking lot. So we're going to ask uh, our RV Basics attendees to park right in that parking lot. It's real. I mean, you park there, you walk in the building, you're good. Um, once the convention starts, anyone who has a passport registration uh, will have you park in the passport and, uh, and day pass lot, which is uh, the north entrance. So it's right off of um, General, and that, it's off of, uh, oh, what's the name of that street? Larry Walker Parkway. I apologize. Larry Walker Parkway, you'll come down, you'll go uh, right into that north lot, and we'll have parking there for you. You'll just walk in, catch a tram, and off you go. I want to say hi, hi, Chris. Good to see you. Good to see you on board, and, and Allison, and Merry Christmas to you, Kevin Moore. 
Anyway, be sure to type in your questions if you have them, and we'll keep going on. <clears throat> uh, one, of the questions, one of the questions from Eugene Herring, he asked, will someone from Gerard awning with parts and service be there? I know Gerard will be there. I know they'll have an exhibit there. I do not know officially whether they'll be doing service. I suspect they will. They have in the past. But until I you know, have that official, yeah, we're going to do it, I can't say for sure yes or no. I know they have been there. I know they're going to be there. They've done service in the past. So um, check back a little bit. We'll be sending some more information out about our service providers who are going to be there as we get closer to the event. <clears throat> uh, Jason Vandergriff, he asked, well, this will be my first FMCA rally in Perry, and I'm new to FMCA too. So we want to welcome Jason. Uh, he's going to have a great time. I'm sure about that. Uh, we want to make his his first time his best time ever, and we're going to do everything we can to help him uh, have a great event. Um, when he says, I plan on driving down on Wednesday, which would be March um, 14th, and we'll arrive late. He asks, do I park on site Wednesday night, or do I need to find a place to stay overnight? Um, Jason, what you can do is you can come and stay in the holding area overnight in dry camp, and then we'll get you parked first thing the next morning. If you choose to do that, I mean, there, you can always stay at Walmart or Cracker Barrel, and there's one of those close by. But you can arrive uh, in the evening, go to our holding area, park there, you know, just dry camp there for the night, and then eight o'clock next morning, our parking team will be out there to put you in your, your permanent site. All right, Richard Hill asks. Uh, some of us are trying to make reservations nearby. How soon can we get in at Perry? Is there dry camping overnight in the holding area before check-in time? Yes. You can get into Perry. Our first parking, our first family parking day will be on Tuesday, March 13th. So if you if you have an arrival date for the 13th, we you know come come on in that day. If yours isn't to the 14th, you can come in the 13th. And we'll hold you in. The, we'll keep you in the holding area. You can stay there, dry camp overnight, and then they'll get you parked the next day. Um, so you shouldn't have any problem with that. If you show up, we'll find some place for you to, to stay over. Um, there's plenty of room in Perry. We want to we want to fill the place up. Um, when you arrive, though, we will have some some place in the holding area where you can hang out until uh, the parking team is ready to get you in. All right. What else we have there? Okay. Again, just a reminder, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in. We'll answer your questions as they come up. There's about 20 of you on here with us, so we know you have questions. Don't be afraid to ask them. We're armed and ready to go. We are ready. Come on. Bring it on. Hurry up quick or go be off decorating something. <laughs> um, we could review some of the questions mm -hmm. from... These are some of the questions that yeah. um, we kind of went over last time. Okay. These are some of our most discuss. popular questions, so it's a great place to start. Uh, one, of the, one of the questions is, where are we going to be parked? Is it a hard surface or on grass or where? Perry has very limited uh, hard surface parking. There are a couple um, asphalt lots that we use primarily for our um, disabled members to make sure they don't have any problems getting in and out of their coach or getting on the move uh, when they leave their, their coach or, or RV. So um, most of our hard surface we use for the disabled folks. Um, most of the rest is on grass. And while that used to be a problem in Perry, it is no longer. They have put a zillion dollars, probably maybe a little less, into making that place um, drain and dry quickly. Uh, we do not experience any of the kind of mud, mud or sinking problems that they may have uh, 10 years ago. So it, that should not be a problem. Um, it's grass for the most part. Um, they're good, good areas that drain quickly. Um, so there should be no problem with that. I know some people have uh, some horror stories from the past, but those are those days are over. Uh, you'll have no problem parking anywhere on that place, uh, on, on the site. You heard it from the L. Terry Kelper has the question. What time do activities begin on uh, March 15th? Terry, what we're going to do is um, for this event, everything's starting 
at 9 o'clock as far as seminars. We're going to start seminars at 9. We're going to have a seminar at 9 till 10. We're going to go 10.30 to 11.30. Then we're going to give everybody a break for lunch uh, to, to go back to the motor mm -hmm. home, to either take a break there, walk the dog, do whatever they need to do, meet with friends. And then we're going to start seminars back up at 1 o'clock. On the first day, though, we're going to have two seminars in the morning. At 1 o'clock, we're going to open up the exhibits, uh, the RV displays, and the rest of the afternoon is just going to be dedicated to folks getting a chance to look through the exhibit hall and uh, walk through the R RVs there, check them out. We're not going to have any seminars that first afternoon. We'll have some entertainment later that day. We'll have some other activities going on that day as well. So there'll be plenty to do that first day, but we're going to we're going to pull the seminars back off of that time when the exhibit's open. Um, the rest of the the rest of the schedule. Um, we're going to have coffee and donuts starting at 8 o'clock rather than 7, which is what we used to do. They're going to go from 8 to 9. Our coffee hour is going to become a real coffee hour. And then at 9 o'clock, we're going to start seminars, do 2 in the morning, take a break, and then come back for three more sessions in the afternoon. Um, 1 o'clock, 2.30, and 4 o'clock. Everything ends at 5. Uh, we'll have some other activities going on throughout the day um, for folks who might not want to be going to seminars or they've already gone through the displays. Give them something to do. Um, and then our evening entertainment is going to start at 7.30 on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then his next was what time will they end on Sunday? Sunday we end seminars at 5 o'clock. Activities will end there. We'll have entertainment at, at 7.30 till 9. And then folks are pretty much free after that. Um, folks will probably start leaving um, maybe that evening after entertainment throughout mm -hmm. the night. We just ask that folks leave by about noon the next day. If you want to stay over, there's going to be a, a way you can do that if you want to stay an extra day. Uh, we will be cutting off our power, uh, our, our generator power, at 9 o'clock that morning. Um, if you are going to be staying over um, at the grounds an extra day, you want to talk to the folks at Perry. They'll probably have you move to a different spot, so you'll have uh, electricity if that's what you need. Um, you know, so you may be asked to move, but we will be turning off our generator generated electricity at 9 a.m. that morning, and we expect most folks to, we, we expect everybody to be gone by noon the next day on that on that Monday. Yeah, I'm gonna take the next question, Joanna. I'm so glad you're volunteering. You are the heart of our whole convention, and I'm not sure I did write your name down. I'm gonna check on what you volunteered for. But you'll be, if you haven't been contacted by a, a captain before, you'll be receiving a packet in your uh, credential envelope with a, a volunteer placard like this, and then a letter describing your volunteer position, uh, your arrival, what time your meeting is, and that type of thing. That will be in a separate um, envelope, which will arrive inside your uh, credential packet when we mail on the 25th. In the meantime, if you have any questions about that, um, either contact us, email, or and we'll get you in touch with the volunteer coordinator, Jim Duncan. Thank you. Yeah. Margaret wants her turn. Yeah. Margaret, go ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say our next question is from Margaret. She owns a road track, and at our last convention, they were all able to park together. She's wondering if the road tracks will be parking together. Again. And she has generator opposed to road right. track. <laughs> Margaret, we're gonna we're gonna do our best to keep all the road tracks together, um, parked in the same area where we have parked them before. Which is, um, if you're familiar with Perry, they have a wide boulevard that goes down um, the middle, kind of up the grounds. Um, the road tracks have parked back in that area in the past. Um, we're going to do the same this time. There may be a few that are parked a little bit away. It won't be that very far um, if it is at all. We're going to have all the road tracks come in the same gate, which will be the, um, the south east gate. Um, no, that's, I'm sorry, it's the Elko gate. And you'll be taken to your spot, and it should all, they should all be fairly close together. There may be a few that have to be a little bit away, but it won't be very far. It won't be like your opposite side parts of the grounds. Um, Gail, Gail, ample room in the seminars. Gail, um, this question is from Gail. Uh, it's is are you going to try to have ample room in the seminars for all those interested in attending them? We absolutely do. We we schedule our seminars 
Um, we kind of have an idea from the past um, what seminars really draw heavy and which ones uh, are not as heavy just because of the, the, the content of the seminar. Any of our big seminars, we put in our biggest rooms. So at Indianapolis, we, or at, I'm sorry, at Perry, we should not have a problem um, with overcrowded rooms as we've had maybe in a couple, a couple other places um, just because we didn't have the size rooms. If we schedule right, we shouldn't have any problems with that at all. Terry wants to know, will the leisure travel vans be parking together? Terry, I don't, <laughs> I, as far as that's concerned, I have not heard. Um, I mean, you guys will be parked probably in the type B um, area, I suspect, um, depending on, you know, what you signed up for. If you're coming with other people in a caravan, then they need to call uh, for our caravan. Uh, you call the office. We'll set you up with the caravan if you want to do that. That way we'll make sure everybody's parked together. I'm not sure how many there are or if that's even what you're talking about. If you're coming in just in individually, uh, you'll be in the Type B lot. The next question, Doug, was, and I, I'm kind of not familiarly new to me, is how scheduling works. Is it uh, for mobility cards or any of the volunteer positions? So most of that done on site, or do the captains reach out in advance? Well, it, it just depends on the <laughs> captain. We ask them to get in touch with our volunteers first. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, I prefer they at least get some kind of idea before we even get there um, as to what folks can do or are willing to do, what days they might need. Um, uh, they, might, might not have, they might have something scheduled that you know they don't want to miss, so they can't volunteer at that time. So we. I asked the captains to, to reach out to the, the volunteers that they have on their list and at least preliminary find out what days can you not do or what days are you best to do. That way they can start their scheduling before they get there. They might not finalize it until they get there. But uh, we do ask the captains to make some preliminary uh, reach out to our volunteers to find out what's what they can do. But um, Jackie, to answer the your question directly, um, it will not be in the envelope that is mailed to you in January. It'll either be done, like Doug said, before or on site. So but what will be in the envelope is a, a job description and a, a volunteer meeting time that we'll have for you, that all the volunteers for carts will show up at a certain time and meet their captain and go over scheduling. Mm. What other questions, questions do you guys have? You're welcome. We're here to help you out and ease any worries you might have. Mm -hmm. Now to wrap for you a couple more. Oh, that's a great question, Martin. Oh. Thank you. Hey, Martin. Um, the question, Martin's uh, question is, will towables be in a separate area? The answer to that will be no. They will be parked, depending on what type of parking, whether it's electric or, uh, you know, whatever type of parking they choose, that will be where they are parked. We're not having a separate lot for uh, for towables at all. They're, you know, we're welcoming welcoming uh, towables in the FMCA. They will be members just like all the all everyone else. So they're going to be parked just like everybody else. And we want them to be meeting people. We want our our, our past members to be meeting the towable folks. And I, you know, when some, somebody asked me about it, you know, bringing them into the convention, I was like, well, you know, once the vehicle's parked, whether it's a tow or a motorhome. Once it's parked, everybody's the same. We all we all do the same stuff. Um, it's the same vehicle. It's it's sitting there. It's a livable uh, mobile vehicle. So, you know, everybody's going to be in the same area. Welcome aboard, Martin. We got a couple other questions from uh, from last time that I'll, I'll uh, go up there. It looks like Gail came up with uh, another question. Keep them coming, guys. We like seeing the questions. Uh, as far as uh, Gail's question was, do you have a feel for how many additional attendees will be there since towables will be allowed? Well, towables have been allowed to come to our conventions for probably about the last four or five years. Um, this is the first time that they will be able to come as members. Um, so we really don't know. I know right now we we don't have a very large number of them. I suspect it will grow as we um, 
as we welcome more towable members into FMCA. Um, so I, for me to fathom a guess, I really couldn't. I would say, I don't know. The most we've ever had, I think, are like around 15, but I suspect we'll grow a little bit bigger than that. Um, in Perry, it'll grow more in Gillette, and I think it'll just continue to grow as uh, as we have more towable members uh, come in come into FNCA. Hi, Ken. Welcome, new member. Welcome. <laughs> um, this the rally we're discussing today is in Perry, Georgia, March fifteenth through the eighteenth at the uh, Georgia National Fairgrounds and Agri Center. And then our next one will be uh, in Gillette, Wyoming, and that will be July 18th through 21st. So, if you, you know, depending on what part of the country you're in, how far you want to go, um, we'll be, you know, east, it's kind of southeast and a little bit northwest uh, within the next year. So hopefully, hopefully you can join us in, uh, at one of those locations. And welcome to FMCA. Terry Kuyper asks, will we be able to purchase fresh, hot meals there, breakfast, lunch, and dinner on all days? Terry, we're going to have uh, concession uh, stands open uh, throughout the duration of the event. Um, they do have a restaurant there um, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that you can go to. It's not a, it's not a huge restaurant, but it is there. Um, so, you know, depending on what you're looking for, um, you know, you'll be able to find it there. There are also uh, several restaurants in the in the vicinity. There's a Cracker Barrel, probably less than a half a mile from wherever you're going to park, uh, maybe a mile um, that you can go to. There's some other restaurants in the area, in town. Um, there's uh, probably a mile or two away in in kind of the Perry Strip. Uh, there's quite a few restaurants if you choose to go to go to those areas uh, to get something to eat. There's some good restaurants in the area, so um, we will have some concessions. Um, there is a restaurant on site, um, so you know, depending on what you want, you may be able to find it there. I'm not sure what you're going to be looking for for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, that's a great question, Peggy. Peggy's wondering what type of sewing seminars will we have? Well, Peggy, we'll have our uh, we'll have our quilting. Um, seminar that we have at, at, at each um, at each convention. I'm not sure, Barb, what kind of, uh, if we have any sewing craft classes uh, signed up so far. I just, uh, we just got a Hexi um, craft program, um, um, and she's all excited. She said she could take about 30 to 40 ladies and teach you that, that new craft. So we're happy to have her aboard, and then we have a regular quilting. Right, we'll have our quilting, and then we'll have um, a sewing room uh, set up as well, which we've done in the past, um, where the ladies can, uh, if they choose to, bring their sewing machine to this room. We have it, uh, we have it, uh, lock, it's a lockable room. Um, typically Lois Marvin, I'm not sure if she is this time, but she usually handles uh, the opening and the closing of the room. Um, so if you want to just, Bring your sewing machine, get together with ladies, uh, do some sewing, do some talking, have some fun together. Uh, we will have that available. Yeah, Terry, it's good to hear from you again. Uh, Terry's asked us, will there be shuttles to the off-site restaurants and the attractions in the area? Terry, we're going to have one day where we're going to have some shuttles going into, into Perry. That will be on... Um, Wednesday, I believe, March uh, 14th, we will not have shuttles um, going into town to take people to, to dinner and to, to lunch and things like that. We will not have those. Let's talk about the shuttles on the grounds as well. We'll have, we'll have shuttle service to help you get around the fairgrounds. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have uh, plenty of tramming both into the, the far out parking lots and nearby where we'll have some golf cart trams. We also use our golf carts in the disabled uh, area lots to get folks around. Um, we'll have uh, tractor pulled trams that go into the parking lots, pick people up, bring them in, take them home, um, you know, throughout the day. If there, if there are activities going on, we'll have trams running. Typically we start about a half an hour before an activity starts and about a half an hour after the final 
whatever the day brings. Usually it's entertainment. Ends at 9, our trams will run at least till 9.30 to make sure everybody gets home. It's especially uh, tricky in Perry because um, it is dark in the mornings, typically when people start getting going, and it is definitely dark at night when people get back. So um, we have to be very careful when I ask you know, any of our attendees to be careful while they are out there um, getting on trams, getting off trams. Um, make sure the tram is stopped. Make sure the golf cart stopped. Don't try and get on a golf cart that's moving. Um, just pay attention to what's going on. Uh, we certainly don't want anyone you know, getting injured while we're, uh, while we're um, in the midst of our convention. That's not what you, you came to do. You came to have fun, so we want to make sure you go home in one piece. I want to say hi to Sarah. Thanks for joining. And um, Peggy, yes, uh, the uh, quilting uh, donations, that's a good program. Um, can you, you want to elaborate on that, Doug? Or Which one? Where the ladies, uh, Peggy, where she talks about she's bringing several quilts to donate. Oh, that's terrific, yeah. Peggy. Thank you very much. We always, um, at, during our uh, on-road quilter seminar, um, a lot of the ladies bring quilts um, to donate that they've made throughout the year. Um, and, you know, we collect them all. We give them to some organization uh, in, the, in the vicinity of where our event is taking place in Perry. I'm not sure exactly what the, um, what the charity is that we'll be giving it to in Perry at this point, but they will go to a, definitely go to a good cause uh, that can be used. A lot of times we give it to um, uh, women's shelters or uh, fire departments, police departments, that they can give to kids who are in need um, you know, at, at some point. Thank you for your donation. Yes, Jeff. absolutely. Hi, Jeff. Go on, Jeff. Um, <laughs> Jeff's asking how seminars are scheduled, so I can hit a few. Well, that's that's a that's that a is loading question. that's a that is kind of a loaded question. Um, <laughs> during you know during the the run up to uh, to the conventions, we seek out some people to do seminars. Some people come to us to do seminars, and we will um, you know at December eighth was uh, the cutoff date for seminars, so. Um, we'll be putting the schedule together here real soon, Barb and I, and the way the seminar scheduling works is there are certain things that we know are going to draw a bunch of people, so we want to make sure we get those in the correct rooms right away. Um, there are certain uh, things that we do as far as FMCA seminars, such as John Walker's uh, President's Forum, Rep Porter will be doing a, a benefit seminar. We want to make sure we put that in the biggest room possible so folks, so all of our members can come and hear about the state of the association, what's going on in FMCA, what our benefits are. Um, I would recommend that you go to those seminars just to find out what FMCA is about, first of all, with John and what's going on. And then so many people don't really know all the benefits that are available for FMCA. And Rhett does a great job going out there, talking about all the things that are available to our members that you know many may not even realize. So. Um, I would really recommend going to those, and those are going to be Saturday. John is going to be at 9 o'clock, and Rex will be at 10.30. They'll both be in Reeves Arena, so we won't have any problem with seating uh, there. Um, we'll, you know, we hope to pack the place with, with members um, going to find out this information. We'll be sure to have plenty of seating for those two seminars, that's for sure. Tell them about how we've structured it a little differently with the hour and a half hour. Break yeah, we, the longer lunch. we, uh, we, what we've done with seminars this year, and um, one of the things that I noticed is that people always seem rushed around all day. They didn't get a chance to kind of take it easy, talk to people. I mean, you're getting together with all these other uh, RV owners, have a chance to sit down and talk to them over a cup of coffee or whatever. Um, so what we've done is uh, we're going to start the seminars at 9 o'clock, as I mentioned, because I think we were starting way too early. People weren't ready to go quite yet. So we're going to start at 9. We're going to go uh, 9 to 10, and then 1030 to 11, 1130. Um, we we kind of took 15 minutes out of the seminar so we can make this work. So they're going to be a little bit shorter seminars, an hour, but it's going to give us an hour and a half break in midday to take it easy. To, to get something to eat, like I mentioned before, walk the dog, whatever. We're going to start back up at 1. We're going to do the same thing an hour for each seminar, half an hour between, because we know folks need to get from one building to the next, give people an opportunity to do that, and at 5 o'clock. So we'll basically have five time slots a day for each room um, where we'll have seminars. 
I apologize. Um, Jeff, a little bit more on your uh, question about seminars. We will do everything we can to get seminars in the right rooms. We look at past performance of seminars, how many people went to certain seminars, and determine how what room that needs to be in. Each room has a you know determined number of seats in it that will, uh, that are available. So we'll take the list of seminars or all of the seminars we got, look at them, kind of start piecing them into that puzzle, and move along like that. I mean, it's not an exact science. Um, you know, there might maybe, you know, when we were in Indianapolis, they only drew 35 people. We'll get to Perry and they'll draw 135. So, you know, that's a challenge for us to figure that out, to see, you know, from the last three or four seminars, what they drew. Maybe there was a reason they didn't draw that well at a convention before. Um, they were going against another seminar that drew a lot of people and kind of pulled some of theirs. So we try not to, um, do seminars that are the same topics at the same time. We try to split those up throughout uh, the course of the event, um, just to make sure that you know we're not pitting two you know seminars against each other. Um, I bet. I bet. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to seeing you. Yeah. you in the info center. Hey Jeff. Yeah, we thought the dog walk was. Uh, at lunchtime was a great idea. And we are, Jeff, just so you know, and I think you'll appreciate this and, and all of our other dog folks will appreciate this as well. We are going to um, create an area for a dog park, um, an area of grassy, a grassy area, kind of fenced in a little bit. There's gonna, it's going to be a little challenge to do that, but we're going we're gonna to make it work. Where you can take your dog, throw the ball, let him run around a little bit. I know sitting in the motorhome all day that them dogs, their legs are ready to go. So we're going to try and uh, create something where you know folks can take their dogs, let them go for a little while without you know worrying about them running around, running away. Um, so I think that'll be a good addition. Um, we're going to try and do that uh, in every venue we go to in the future. Okay. You guys have any other questions? We'll probably start to wrap this up unless you start flooding us with questions, which we would love. Um, yeah, anything, anything else you want to wrap? Maybe re-announce the motion again to get registered. Okay. <laughs> I guess I can just say it. <laughs> Don't forget yeah. our front row uh, re early or registration program. We're going to draw everyone who's registered now is included in the drawing. We'll draw December 22nd and you and a friend, three. He's just gone crazy with us. Three people and a friend will get front row parking for the Perry uh, Convention. Yep. You will love that. Oh, we got another question. Sue. Uh, Sue, Sue asks, now that towables are included, are there any seminars directed toward towing and its unique challenges and vendors for towables? Well, actually, it says Jim. So, sorry, Jim. Um, I'm guessing you're somehow related to Sue. Uh, for Perry, we will have, um, I'm sure, some towable presence. I can't say that we will have a lot. Um, our seminar applications were due the 8th. So that was shortly, yeah. very shortly after the towable vote was announced. Um, we will have, I'm sure, some towable uh, vendors there, not as many as uh, I suspect in the future. There's a lot of crossover. So um, some of the companies that may have been uh, exhibiting before probably didn't bring their towable stuff because they didn't need to and I'm, I, I'm sure they will this time um, I suspect that as we go you know to Gillette and down the road we're going to see that grow uh, exponentially I, I think it's going to be a good addition both to our seminar uh, our seminar offerings and our uh, commercial exhibits and Margaret had a question about the program. For those of you that don't know, we publish an event program. There'll be a digital version of it as well as a print version. And she's asking about seminars and how they're listed within the program. Well, Margaret, that's a challenge for us because a lot of the seminar descriptions and titles that we get kind of don't match. And they kind of aren't written all that well, and we're very reliant on the people who are doing the seminars to give us a good idea of what the seminar is about. I apologize that you didn't get to that seminar, uh, you know, in Indianapolis. Um, 
Another challenge we have is people writing too much for their seminar description. I know, you know, we have some people that will write us 500 words if we allow them to. So we do have to kind of put a word count on them to give a nice, succinct description of what they're going to be talking about. And we do rely on the seminar presenters to do that. And sometimes they're not the greatest. So I apologize for that. We hope to get that cleaned up in the future. And um, one of the things that uh, is really exciting to me is we're going to be uh, launching a um, an event app at this convention. A lot of folks don't like to carry that program around with them during the days. They might have it back at the coach and they might circle things and read through it. But what this app is going to do is basically it's going to put that program in your phone. So you can check, you know, all the seminars. You can, you know, tap which ones you want to do. It'll put on a schedule for you. Um, there'll be all the information about the exhibitors in the app. Um, it's really going to be a great addition to the information that folks can get on site. Um, I'm, I'm tickled about it. I, I, I can't wait to get it running and, and use it this time. Um, we're also going to be able to send out notifications. So if, if something changes or we need to get some information out immediately to people, we'll be able to do that through this. We also have our easy texting and we'll still utilize that. But also, you know, we'll be able to use this app as well. So if you're, you know, walking around and we send a notification that a time has changed for something or something had to be canceled, we can get that information out to folks right away. And I, I really hope that folks embrace this. They give it a try. Um, I really like it, the idea of it. I think people who try it out are going to fall in love with it. I really do. Now, it is our first time doing it, so there'll probably be some hiccups, and I don't want to say there won't. Um, but, you know, that's the only way we're going to learn is by doing it. It was, uh, it was um, something that we tried to get. We went to the executive board. We asked them, you know, is this something that we can do? We need to get ahead of it. This is becoming more and more a, a big thing for conferences like this. So we definitely want to be ahead of the curve and um, get our folks on it. Everybody carries a cell phone. Everybody carries a smartphone. So why don't we just put their program on that phone? They can have it right there in front of them. They don't have to carry that program around. Joanna, the packets will be mailed. We'll begin mailing uh, January 25th. Um, Kristen. Yeah. Um, hi, Kay. Um, we're so happy to see you at the next convention. And you have a great question. Um, Barb just answered your question regarding when the packets will be mailed. But for the seminar information, that will come out in the event program. And we'll also have, we'll, we also have uh, some seminar information available to folks. Before, um, before that, uh, typically what we do is we put our program together, um, and that we'll, we'll start working on that um, very soon. Um, once we get the program set, we send that to get printed. At the same time, they create a digital edition of the program that we will put online. Um, usually that happens, I think that'll happen probably in, early to mid-February, we'll have that available so folks can pull it up on their computer, um, look at basically the program as you will see it when you get the paper version. Um, you can start making your plans then uh, as far as what seminars you want to go to, what activities are going on, and you know, kind of plan your schedule out at least a month ahead of time. So, you know, I hope between that, between that and the app and the regular program, People should have, you know, whatever information they need. If there are questions, give us a call. I mean, we are we are happy to talk to you about anything you might have a question about. You can come on this forum as well. You know, we do these, ask your questions as you guys are doing today. Um, send emails to us, um, and we'll get back to you with, with the answers. So, you know, one of, my object, one of my objectives is to make sure if there's a question, it does not go unanswered. Um, we might not know the answer immediately, but we will find it out and get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, well on that note, I think we will wrap up this session. Like Doug just said, call us, email us if you think of any other questions, and we will be doing another Q&A session in January. Um, is it January 10th, I believe? <laughs> it's the second Wednesday of January. Okay. So, so probably around the 10th. We'll have more details <laughs> coming out about that. But in the meantime, feel free to reach out to us. And we're so glad you could join us today. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
This will be put up on the website as well, so if you need to go back to it and listen, our previous one is on the website now. We'll be doing another one. So if you come up with questions and um, you don't want to send them, bring them here this, to this form you know, in, a, in, in a month, and we'll answer more. As I said, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, and, and we'll get back to you as, as quickly as possible. So everybody have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We'll see you and in we'll 2018. See you, see you in Harry. Yep. <laughs>